I can never tell when I'm live. It says live and I'm not, and it says, um, it counts me down and I am. Anyway, I believe, well, we've got a couple of minutes, and I'm very excited about um, today's Facebook Live because I'm, I have a chance to teach while showing what I actually do. And quite frankly, that's all any of us know. What we do is our reality, and what that is has everything to do with our belief system. So I'll do that briefly, um, and then we'll launch into what I consider to be a, well, I'll call it well-stocked pantry, but far more than most people need. How are we doing with time? Let me take a look. I have my computer right here. Oh, it's time to start. Oops. I have to plug you back in. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because, okay. Hello, I'm Nan Simonson, and I'm so glad you're here. Today on my Facebook Live, what is this, the 6th of, um, of May 2021, I just got back a couple of hours ago from 14 days away. We went to visit my husband's oldest daughter, Christine, and her husband, Manny, and their almost two-year-old baby boy, Michael, in Albuquerque. Spent a few days with them and then went up to um, Santa Fe for six days and then up to um, Taos for five days and then back down for another day with them. And we just flew home just a couple of hours ago. So my, I should show you, but I don't think the camera's on it. My refrigerator is bare, uh, but the cupboards are never bare. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Let me properly introduce myself. I'm Nan Simmonson. I'm a health and lifestyle coach with Lifestyle Medicine in Riverside and Redlands, and they're expanding nationally. And um, I work with patients and groups and I do monthly cooking courses with them and then I have a YouTube channel, YouTube uh, forward slash Nan Simonson. There's a Nancy Simpson or something that it keeps directing me to when I try to go to my own um, YouTube channel, but it's Nan Simonson. But if you go to my website, nansimonson.com, you can connect to the YouTube channel. You can also connect to my book on Amazon. My book, Aging Powerfully, sort of launch, not sort of, did launch, I'll, I'll say my reality right now. Um, almost, well not quite three years ago, two and a half years ago, I believed I was in a health crisis because all my numbers were going the way they do on a standard American diet, and that was high cholesterol, very high, high blood, well, the, high, the blood pressure wasn't that high, but I was pre-diabetic, and uh, markers for rheumatoid arthritis, two other autoimmune diseases, and uh, what happens is doctors direct one who has bad health markers to specialists, and every one of the specialists did the same thing. You've got a this, a that, and the other, and here's a prescription, you'll take it for life. And I just wasn't gonna go there. And so I, at the same time, had just finished my certification course with uh, the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, a year-long course as a health coach uh, with them, or certification for a health coach with them, looking at all the healthy ways of living our life. And I was hired. Uh, to work with patients at Lifestyle Medicine. Well, what is Lifestyle Medicine? My hero uh, in terms of philosophies because the College of Lifestyle Medicine believes in four basic pillars. And they are nutrition, which they see in terms of a plant-based or plant-strong um, nutritional plan. Uh, movement, we've got to move our bodies connectedness, that is with people we love, people we can connect with, people we can make a difference to, people who can make a difference with us. We, we need people, we're tribal. And then finally, resilience, and that is um, sleep, rest, rejuvenation, meditation, um, renewal. And that two-week vacation we just took was a big part of that. So, 
I am a health coach. Six months before I turned 70, which I did in January of this year, I knew I wanted to write a book because I had then been more than two and a half years, um, I'll call it recovered, from a eating disorder, bulimia. I began at 15 and couldn't dump until I was 67. And so I thought, I've got a story to tell because I went beyond that. I maintained that um, new lifestyle and I'm healthier than ever by having adopted lifestyle medicine pillars of health. And I thought, I can talk about that. I can help people with that. I'm healthier than I've been in decades. And so I wrote Aging Powerfully, Accept Your Past and Take Control of Your Future. So if eating and, and um, nutrition is part of lifestyle, how do we make that work? Because if you've watched my videos, I can't help myself. I'll show you how to cook something, but I'll give you a lot of philosophy, or a, 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 the, the philosophy of what we're doing and why the physiology of it, as well as the nutritional information on a number of the foods that we're working with. Because I believe that the more plant-based we are, whole food plant-based, the more nourished our body will be. And it's not just that I believe it. I follow the leaders in the field right now, um, neurologists like the Sheriff's Eyes, gastroenterologists like Will Bolshevitz, um, uh, GPs who have been working for 40 years to help people improve their health and have reversals with a whole food plant-based diet. Um, Dan Butner, who wrote about the Blue Zones for um, National Geographic, all of them see a plant-centered diet as the way to keep us healthy. So that's what I teach. doesn't mean you have to be completely plant-based. I am. My husband and I, for going on, well, going on three years now, are completely plant-based. No milk, dairy, eggs, meat, fish. Um, no animal product at all. We do it for our health. We also have now evolved to really believing that we're doing it for the planet and for our um, future generations. But that's another thing. I won't even go there right now. Uh, so let's talk about how to make that work because in my videos, and again, you can access those easily by going to the website nansimmonson.com and going to my cooking show. Um, my recipes are on my website. Um, I'm speaking now to power agers, high power agers. Let's see. Hi, Linda, you're there. <laughs> I love seeing your name on there. So hi, Linda, glad that you joined me. And Linda Heiss. Um, okay, so how do we make good nutrition work, whole food plant-based? Um, we do it by learning some cooking techniques. My videos help with that. Um, because I don't use oil, uh, I, we eat fat, we eat avocados, we eat seeds and nuts, especially flax seeds on a daily basis because that's how we get our long chain omega-3 uh, fatty acids. But I don't add oils to things. Why? Because we are whole food plant-based and oils are processed. If I'm going to use an oil, it's going to be not to cook because that breaks down the oil unless it has a very high smoke point. And olive oil, which is one of our better oils, does not. It smokes at 375, and people saute much higher than that. So maybe I'll dribble some, but I can't think of the last time I did that. I dry saute. So my videos will show you that. Um, I have talked about the big salads I have every day. And, the, and on my YouTube channel, you'll see how I do my chopped salads. And they're marvelous. And that much whole green and fresh vegetable and fruit and grain and, and legume for lunch in the form of a salad, you know, fresh and vibrant with dressings that are made without oils, but with things like beans or nuts and seeds or, um, ooh, our favorite ranch dressing is made with a potato base and it's fabulous. So you're going to see those things, but you're probably, well, you are here to learn what I do in terms of staples. So I got home after two, two weeks um, to an empty refrigerator because my fresh foods 
uh, have been depleted. We, we ate them, we brought a lot of things with us. I did a little travel video, you can look for that on my YouTube channel or my, my um, Facebook group channel because I talked about travel and, and the things we brought with us so that we weren't in the airport or in the airplane eating things like this. Oh, I got this today on the way back from, because we had a layover in Phoenix from Albuquerque, a snack mix. This is about an inch and a half of small type telling what they put in this package. Um, a lot of these things, diacetate, malic acid, um, calcium, monocalcium phosphate, aluminum, bicarbonate, they don't belong in our bodies. That's why I talk about whole food, plant-based. What happens is food manufacturers, and I'm not a hysteric, but this is true, and when I talk about staples, this really comes into play. If I was showing you my refrigerator and showing you apples and cauliflower and broccoli and greens, we don't have to worry about the additives because that's whole food as close to nature as possible, which is what I um, I espouse. I was going to say preach, maybe I do, um, which I espouse. Um, but when you get into package things, you get into da 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 the danger zone, where you think something as innocent as a little snack mix couldn't hurt anything. I'm a little bit hungry. There's so much crud in this. Oh man. Um, well, let me give you an example. We always drink soy milk. Soy is a good thing. Current evidence shows that soy is actually is actually preventative. Uh, against breast cancer, against prostate cancers, uh, things they feared, the um, phytoestrogens have now been shown to actually dock on the est estrogen receptors and block the estrogens that come in either produced in our body in excess by fat cells, brought in by animal products because those are all part of, for example, dairy. Uh, and actually prevent those excess estrogens that have been shown to cause tumor growth. Um, but this is soy lecithin. This soy lecithin is a highly processed part of soy. On the other hand, this, for example, soy milk that we put into our oatmeal every morning is nothing but soy and water. And it's organic because with soy, as with a lot of the grains and legumes, they are heavily sprayed, and if it's GMO, meaning genetically modified, it's in many cases genetically modified so that they can spray these crops. And this is important to know about for as it relates to um, staples, packaged goods, uh, things like oatmeal. They found um, glyphosate in baby's oatmeal. They're finding it in the, our, the bloodstreams of most of us in the country because almost everything is sprayed with Roundup, which is a glyphosate, and it gets into our systems. Who cares? What, it, what does that do? Okay, I can't even talk about food without reminding you of why I believe strongly that whole food plant-based is the way to go. One of the strongest influencers of our health is our microbiome. The microbiome are the microorganisms in our body, uh, focused in the gut, but actually even in our, on our skin, in our uh, cells, it's it, the, these microbes, micro um, organisms, their bacteria and fungus and, and um, uh, parasites, good and bad, um, they are all part of the microbiome. They make us work. 70 to 75% of our neurotransmitters, the things that cause attitude changes, the way we think, the clarity, have everything to do with the microbiome because they are produced in the microbiome by these bugs, by the friendly bugs. The only thing that these bugs eat is plants and plant-based materials, not meat or animal-based materials, and certainly not things like glyphosate, and certainly not things like fake garbage in the foods that are packaged by the manufacturers to make us want them so badly that we'll just keep eating and eating because the 
flavors just kind of hit our our system in such a strong way, much stronger than natural foods would, that we would prefer something like this, if you're not used to whole foods, to something like a delicious, wonderful apple. You know what we ate instead of that? I brought with me some uh, purple sweet potato, and we opened that up, and we had that with a little hummus on it, and oh my gosh, it was fabulous. Things like that are what we've learned to do rather than fall, I'll call it fall prey to uh, fake food as a way to nourish our body. So those things that I'm talking about, the value of whole foods, the value of plant foods to feed our microbiome to keep us healthy, are everything as it relates to what we choose for food. Now, let's talk about a cupboard. <laughs> You're going to look at my cupboard and think the lady is neurotic and maybe even just stop watching. <laughs> It's not that I'm neurotic. For, gosh, almost 30 years, I worked with Tupperware. I became a consultant when my baby was four months old. I became a manager when he was five and a half months old, earned the company car, uh, was a manager for, gosh, seven years, and then had my own Tupperware franchise, big warehouse, and did that for, what was that, 20 years. Um, and so you're going to see a lot of Tupperware here. I love the product. I think this is the best way to organize a cupboard, but it's not necessary. And a lot of people, and I kind of agree, believe, and rightfully so, that the safest thing to keep your food in is glass. It's non-reactive. All plastics are manufactured, but I can't have that much glass here and be able to store all the things I store. Plus, I have my Tupperware. So one of the things that I know to do, and let me just mention that to you as it relates to food storage, is don't put hot food in plastic, don't cook food in plastic, don't heat food, even in the microwave, in plastic. Because that's where you start having your um, transfer of um, oh, the poly polycarbonates and the... the um, the, the things in plastic, the PBAs, that can get into food and actually be hormone disruptors, changing the way our bodies respond to um, things nutritionally. Let me see if there's anything I need to say to anybody. Okay, uh, so I promised today that I was going to talk about how to organize a pantry for ease in the kitchen, what staples make any eating style easier, what specialty items add fun and interest to meals, but also the answer to the question is whole food plant-based pantry or is a whole food plant-based pantry full of very expensive items. Okay, so let me show you what I do to keep my staples. Isn't that beautiful? Now, as I said, I had a Tupperware company. I worked with Tupperware for almost 30 years. I love these products and quite frankly, they make a very impressive storage uh, unit because I can label everything, I can see what's in it, it's completely airtight, and they stack, and they stack by units. Um, I'll just mention this, I have no affiliation with Tupperware at all anymore, we sold our company in 2003, but they are numbered, that's a size 1, that's a size 2, that's a size 3, um, let's see. This is, where's a four? Do I have any fours? Probably not. That's a three, and that's a five. So two twos and a one equal a five. That's a five. If that's, oh, that is, that's a four. And so a one on top of the four would fit into a cupboard that is a size five. So I've helped people set these things up. Not anymore. I did that for decades. Um, they're called modular mates. And it helps to be able to have any configuration fit in whatever size cupboard you have because you would know your size and you would just add things together number wise but let me talk about what I have as in terms of staples and then I'm going to talk to you about what I have in terms of canned foods packaged foods um, seasonings and things like that so let me begin <sighs> My cupboard, the pantry, is where I keep all my food. I have across the room, oh, I wonder if I should show you. Hmm, 
I'm going to show you long distance. I'm going to see if I can get this way across the kitchen to this cupboard. I don't know if you can see this, but this is, let's see if we see that. Yeah, you can kind of see it. This is up here where I keep my spices. I'll just show you that from afar. and Maybe someday I'll even talk to you about the spices I think are, again, very handy to have to add a lot of flavor to Whole Foods to give you any, I'm going to say, even ethnic bent to the same dish. Cumin and, and smoky paprika and cardamom. Add a, a Mediterranean or a um, Latin uh, flavor to food. Herbs de Provence adds kind of a Mediterranean and let's say French um, combination. The oregano and marjoram. Uh, strong flavors at an Italian flavor so you can really play with food that way but okay so what does one have in a whole food plant-based diet we have fruits and vegetables we have tubers that would mean potatoes for example this is one of my favorite potatoes it's purple We've been gone two weeks. See, I'm getting a little bit of growth there. And these are poisonous. Don't ever think these are okay to eat because the potato is a solanum. And a solanum, leaves are poisonous, sprouts are poisonous. You just break them off. Um, if the potato were soft, if it had turned green, for example, this being a, if it were a white potato and it turned green, I wouldn't eat it. I could plant it and get more potatoes, but I wouldn't eat it. Um, Solanacea is the genus. I designed gardens for 15 years, and I'm a master gardener, so I know plants. But in any case, um, okay, so this is a potato. Yes, I could put it in my cupboard, but I find that these cupboards tend to be too warm because they sprout right away. This amount of sprouting I would have gotten probably in a couple of days if I kept this in the cupboard. I think it's because there's just not, even though it's cooler, there's not enough air circulation, and that was out there. Um, from the time we left and that's very few sprouts but these purple sweet potatoes they're marvelous so we have fruits vegetables tubers um, that's a, another subject yes that's a staple but we're talking about cupboards now um, seeds and nuts grains and legumes so that's pretty much what you're going to find in here and if I were in a kitchen that had that was, well, let's say designed differently. Those are my herbs, but other, uh, yeah, the herbs and spices and flavored vinegars, like my balsamic vinegar. Um, the other foods are all here. In a lot of kitchens, you would have some of this. For example, this is kind of my baking unit. Um, oat flour, uh, baking soda, uh, coconut sugar, which I can't even think of the last time I've used it. I don't know if I've used it this year or last year at all, but I have it in case I need it. Um, anyway, uh, a lot of people would have baking units close to where they bake if their kitchen was like that or if it served them well, but this pantry is where I come to get what I need, put it on the counter, use it, and bring it back. And when you're working with dry goods like um, for your grains and your legumes, you're going to find them in a number of, of um, configurations. For example, every morning I have oatmeal or oats and we, during our trip, stay, uh, traditionally, we stay in Airbnbs because we want a kitchen, we want to make our own food. What we tended to do this this trip, and we do it all the time, is we eat breakfast in. We want whole grain. We want whole food, plant-based. We have berries with us. We have citrus with us, and then we do oats. Well, at home, using my um, my, I have Instant Pot eight cup and uh, or eight quart and Instant Pot six quart. Oh, I'm going to show you something else. 
Let's see if you can see this. Because these are deep cupboards, people will say, but ma'am, I don't have room for some of these things. You may have some deep cupboards. Can you see back there is my six quart Instapot. It's not a big deal for me to move this and get to that because I don't have room for it anywhere else. The eight quart is at the bottom of that cupboard underneath my empty jars because I use jars to store the sauces I make like my vegan sour cream or lemon sauce or um, uh, homemade hummus. So in my Instant Pot, I will cook this oat roast. Oat roast, if you could see it a little bit um, I don't know if you can see this clearly. They look a little like barley, but I can't have barley because I was diagnosed a long time ago with um, a sensitivity to gluten. And so I don't do anything that has gluten, not farro, spelt, barley, wheat. But oats don't have gluten unless they're processed. If I was celiac, I probably wouldn't. I would be much more careful. I don't think, this is organic uh, oat groats, but I don't know that they're gluten free, even though my oat meal, which is more processed and therefore it's more, I'm gonna say sensitive to any contamination by gluten. When I do a whole grain, for example, if this were brown rice or as it is oats, uh, with any grain, I rinse them before I use them because think about it, they're, they are removed, they're husked, so to speak. They're removed from the shaft with a machine, dusty, dusty. They go into silos, dusty, dusty, and who knows what's crawling in there. And then they get into um, manufacturing facilities and eventually they're packaged to look really pretty. But they've been in some pretty gnarly situations. And so I always rinse them first. So back to my point. So this is oats as an oat groat. I will cook that and I have a recipe in my on my YouTube channel, oat groats in the Instapot. I think it's the best way to do it. In my six quart, because we've been gone, I don't have any cook to show you, but they're in my refrigerator all week long. Make a big batch and that's in the refrigerator. Well, I have this for breakfast, but we weren't gonna make this or bring this with us for a two week period because I didn't have a Instapot. So instead, we use uh, whole rolled oats. And these I buy, this is just an oat groat that's been broken down somewhat by being rolled. And that breaks down the fiber somewhat. So what's the best if I'm trying to be most whole food? The whole grain is always the best. Next you can get into steel cut where that big grain is just cut like by steel blades. And it takes almost 50 minutes to cook. 40 to 50 minutes to cook and it's much more um, chewy. I love the oat groat because it's, there's so much toothsomeness to it. Um, but for our purposes, when we travel, we just use rolled oats, uh, organic, gluten-free, because this I can't rinse. If I rinse this, I, I kind of destroy it. And so we just put it in a bowl and cook it on the stove for a few minutes or even microwave it with, um, the soy milk. Why do I like soy milk? I love almond milk. I like oat milk. I like, um, gosh, macadamia milk. Um, I just saw some um, um, flax milk um, while we were traveling. I'm always looking in stores to see what great stuff they have. Uh, but I do use soy milk, first of all, because soy is healthy. Second, because it's one of the few, if only milk that contains the amount of protein a cup of regular milk does. You can drink a cup of soy milk and it's nine grams of protein. And so I, we add that to the five grams of protein in a half a cup of oats and the nuts that we use to um, add texture to the meal and the flax seed for the omega-3s. And we have a, gosh, 18 gram um, bre a protein breakfast that's equivalent to two eggs except we're not getting saturated fat we're not getting the hormones the chickens are given and we're not well I won't get into all of that 
Um, but okay, so then we have oats and the whole rolled oats. Well, I take it one step further and I make, there's a label here, muesli. I make a muesli for my husband because he likes that combination. So I take those rolled oats. I have these big, big bowls up here. I don't know if you can see it, but now you really can't. But I have a big bowl that I throw the oats into and I make a lot of it. And um, I'll add currants or raisins. I'll add dried berries and, um, oh gosh, what else? Coconut and sunflower seeds. It's just a muesli. It can be any combination of, of cereal products. If we weren't gluten-free, I'd add, uh, gosh, you bet I would add things that were wheat-based, like wheat flakes and things like that, but I don't. And so this is what my husband likes with his. I just use plain oatmeal with mine. And then stir in banana after it's been cooked and the flaxseed after it's been cooked with some chia seed. But So we have our oat products here, sunflowers. Here's the nuts that go in our breakfast. Here are nuts that we have every day. And I'll show you how we do it. Some people, sorry for walking away from you, some people avoid nuts because they are problematic. Now I has, I was a food addict for 55 years while I fought a eating disorder. And I, there were foods that I couldn't have around and there are still foods that I won't have around and certainly processed foods can be a real trigger. But I don't seem to have a problem when I keep our nuts in this little container, got it in Italy several years ago, but just a small container. I know that I'm aiming for one to two Brazil nuts a day. They're full of selenium, and one to two will give you your selenium for the day. And we keep a combination of nuts here, and they're all raw and most are organic. If I can find them organic, sometimes it's harder to find there's pecans, cashews, hazelnuts, walnuts, and walnuts are the highest nut in omega-3 fatty acids. Um, gosh, what else? I think that's it. And then um, the um, pecans and the um, Brazil nuts. So I'll have a few of these, no more than just a little handful of nuts total for a day. And if I ever find that I'm putting on a pound or two or three, usually I'll catch it at two and go, uh-uh, something's gonna, not the way I like it. I'll just cut down on the nuts and I'll cut down on the avocado um, because those are the highest sources of fats. Fats are healthy, but they're also the most concentrated in calories. And I'd rather be able to have a massive salad with all these vegetables, all these grains, all these legumes, than one tiny bit of nuts that are gone in a second and cut down on those for a week or two and back to what I like to um, maintain as far as weight. So, if you're watching your weight, if you're struggling with it to a degree, that's just a little bit of knowledge that might help. You cut the fats, uh, and uh, because I don't add oils, that's something that I don't have to, but you cut it out of your added oils when you're cooking Almost every recipe will call for, for example, I'm going to be doing a cooking class this Tuesday and I'm pretty sure one of my recipes, and it is in my um, YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, a spicy Swiss chard saute, stir fry. And I don't fry anything with oil and I don't saute with oil, it's all what we call dry saute. Well, an original or the original recipe for that could have had two or three tablespoons of oil in it. If I ate that whole batch of Swiss chard and I could, instead of it being a 30 or 40 calorie, and I don't count calories, but I'm aware of caloric density, instead of it being a 30 or 40 calorie vegetable dish, highly nourishing, now it's two to 300 calories because of the oil, and I couldn't tell the difference. So, um, again, that goes along with what I'm explaining about um, nuts. They're valuable if you can have them in your kitchen. I use them for sauces. Cashews can make some of the best sauces. Um, and so I keep nuts. If that's a problem, stay away from them. If you watch 
Chef AJ, for example, or Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook, they don't deal with nuts because they, they can be a trigger and they don't want that higher calorie density. I seem to be okay with that and have been for a while. So sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, dried fruit, what is that? Currants, raisins, um, dried apricots. Again, those are very calorically dense because you take a grape that's almost 10 calories and you squeeze it down to a raisin and you have a big handful of that. You've just had two or 300 calories you didn't even think about. Whereas if you're eating a whole grape, you might have 10, 20 grapes and that'll be it. As opposed to a handful of raisins that represent 30 or 40 grapes. So just one way of looking at it, but dry fruit is handy. I love carrot salad that I use the currants and the raisins in. Um, almonds go on our cereals and so I have the sliced almonds as well as the, um, and, and I'll show you, these are just in bags that they're delineated so I know what's what. So that's the sliced almond and then this is the slivered almond. And I use them differently actually. Slivered almond or the sliced almond is great on green bean, dry saute with some garlic or shallot. And the um, slivered almond, because it has more bite to it, is really good in the carrot salad. Sesame seeds, poppy seeds, um, the flowers. What kind of flowers do I use if I don't use wheat? Well, this is a coconut flower. I also have oat flour and I have tapioca flour. I don't use them very often. But one of the flowers that I will use, and I've used more often than not, is oat flour. And what is oat flour? Let me see, where are you? Oat flour. Oh, here. This is my own homemade oat flour. What it is, in my Vitamix, just about any blender I think would do it, even though I love the Vitamix because it's so high power, is I put that oatmeal into the Vitamix, turned it into a flour, and when I need something for thickening, this is marvelous. And you know what oats sort of taste like. They're, they're a little bit earthy, um, but they have a really pleasant uh, flavor. And so keeping flowers, a few kinds of flowers, on hand, depending on whether or not you're gluten sensitive, if you are Using a flour, use a whole grain flour. Oats turned into flour is a whole grain flour. It's that, actually it's the oat groat turned into that, turned into that. What's the best? The oat groat is the best because it has the more intact fiber. Um, but on the other hand, it's still a whole grain that has been um, slightly processed, but not ultra-processed and totally unrecognizable. All right, um, so then oh, the coconut. Coconut I'll use for things because it has a lot of flavor, a lot of fat, and so I'm not going to put hands full of coconut, for example, in my carrot salad. I won't use two hands full because a quarter cup of coconut is really calorically dense, but the flavor can be marvelous, and so I keep this on hand for things that I'm adding coconut to. Even things like a an apple crisp, where the apple, chopped apple, and I'm thinking of doing that on this Saturday's cooking class, chopped apple with um, some date paste and um, to moisten it a little and sweeten it just lightly with a crumble of oats and some coconut and a little bit of pecan and lots of cinnamon, maybe some raisins over that, and then baked and crispy, makes a delicious dessert. And you're still a, eating a whole food. What is the difference between that pie and a Marie Callender pie? First of all, if a pie crust is manufactured by somebody, and I use this example all the time, it's gonna be like a McDonald's hamburger bun. 31 ingredients, when really a bun should be flour, salt, yeast, and water. Well, you buy a manufactured crust, they have stabilizers, emulsifiers, colorants, they have flavors in there. It's not a real food in many cases. So what's the difference between that and a store-bought pie? 
you're saving yourself all of that manufactured stuff, but also you're getting whole grains. You're also getting no sugar at all because date paste is just dates. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. It's just dates that have been soaked in water, blended in a blender. It looks like, where are you? Oh, did I use, oh, oh. Hmm. I think I've used my date paste. Okay, I can't show you. Anyway, it, it looks like, um, oh, just a brown kind of a paste. And it's kind of a caramel flavor, and it sweetens things beautifully. And again, all it is is ground up dates. And so it still has the fiber, and it still has the nourishment and the nutrients of a whole food, a whole fruit. It's just, again, calorically dense, so you use just a little bit of it. That's a mistake that some people make. If they are going whole food plant-based, I can say to people, if you go whole food plant-based, keep the salt, oil, and sugar low. Your weight will stabilize, and you will be able to eat so much food, really good food, love your meals, never go hungry, always eat when you're hungry, and always eat until satisfied, and lose weight. I found the same thing. But you have to be aware of certain things. I can't eat tablespoons of date paste because there is a difference between eating to satiety and eating so calorically dense that instead of having foods that would be naturally available as grown, there's a difference between that and having foods that have been, I'll say, processed to the degree that they're super, super calorically dense. Okay, what else is in here? I have all the seeds, sesame, poppy, um, sunflower, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are very, very nutritious. There's um, some fatty acids in there that are that rival just about any other seed, and they're very high protein. They're one of the highest protein seeds. Then we get into the rices. I have lotus rice, and again, these containers just have a lot of things in them. Lotus rice small grain or short grain brown rice. I have um, arboreal rice, the one that you make, um, which one is this? That you can make paella out of, and if I make paella, it's not gonna have seafood in it. It'll have the saffron, but it'll have other um, whole food, plant-based materials. Japanese black rice. It's fun to have a number of options when you want to make a meal and you want to have um, different kinds of grains and different kinds of legumes. Um, tea bags are in here. Um, what do I do about crackers? Because we don't sit down to having, we don't have crackers very often. I bought these. They are, it's called Ella's Flats. All seeds, savory, crisp, gluten-free, sugar-free, a source of fiber because they're simply pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, sesame seed, caraway seeds, psyllium, which is a, a fiber, um, psyllium husk, black pepper, and a tiny bit of salt, um, tiny bit in here, just all smooshed down to a cracker. That's basically a whole food. They look like this. Would I eat a lot of them? No, because, again, they're very calorically dense. That's like having a big handful of seeds and nuts when I could have a slice of sweet potato with some hummus on it and make that like a cracker. Um, so, but we keep a little of this around. Some people live on packaged crackers, packaged chips. I don't even have any packaged chips. Um, and they're getting way too much sodium they're getting a processed food, and it's so salty, salt, oil, and sugar, and flavored that they can't have just one. They'll sit down to a bowl of it and then wonder why they're challenged with um, high blood pressure from all that salt and quite often a weight gain because of all that oil. Okay, um, we've talked about the flowers, and then let's talk about the beans. Move over some of these because that's where... I have so much fun. I love, oh, before I do that, I'll talk to you about quinoa. Quinoa is not a grain, it's a seed, but it's one of the grain-type foods 
And I do this a lot. These are from my husband's office. And I opened this bag of quinoa. And to close it, rather than one of those big bulky clips, I just use these guys. And they're pretty neat. Anyway, this is the multi-colored quinoa. This is white quinoa. And one of the things you have to remember about quinoa, and oh, this is the white quinoa, the other one is a red quinoa. Well, why would I want to have a number of different colors? I just think it's fun to do that. This is another thing I'll make at the beginning of the, how am I doing with time? One, three, ooh, God. ooh, I'm almost done. Oh, shoot. I've been talking way too long, I'm sorry, or way too much. Okay, one of the, the things about quinoa you need to know is that if it's not pre-rinsed, you can buy the big bag of it at Costco, and it is pre-rinsed. If it's not pre-rinsed, you've got to rinse it before using it, not just because, as I said, they get dusty and who knows what crawls on it, but because there's something, I think it's called something like sap saponin or uh, Anyway, there is a, a, um, a protectant to the plant that keeps bugs away that irritates our gut. And you don't want to eat it, you want to rinse it away. So you've got to rinse quinoa really well if it doesn't say on the package that it's been pre-rinsed. So let's talk about legumes. Their legumes are beans, um, as some people call them, pulses. I have, for example, lentils, black lentils, red lentils, French green lentils, red lentils. Do they all behave differently? Yes. The red lentils cook down to almost a cream right away. The green lentils hold their shape. This is green split peas um, and, and yellow split peas. I'll make different soups out of every one of these. Love split pea soup, love the red lentils curried, love the black lentils on their own, and I'll spice them and make tacos with them because they also really hold their shape. And so you don't have to keep this much around. You may not want to buy this much. It may last you too long. But I buy it because I find it fun to be able to have the options. And then the legumes. So we have the lentils, we have the beans, the peas rather, and then we have the beans. I love this place, Rancho Gordo, because they they offer heirloom beans and they offer them very fresh. Um, beans can sit around so long that when you cook them what should be an hour to, to softness, uh, two hours into it, they still haven't softened because they're way too old. And so they have heirloom beans, they also sell fresh beans, so I have fun buying from them. Uh, this happens to be garbanzos, but the garbanzos aren't particularly interesting. But things like these, um, and I go for organic as often as I can, and this is organic scarlet runner beans, these giant beans that when you take a bite, it's like eat, eating a, a piece of meat in a stew which I don't even like giving that kind of analogy because I don't need to eat meat in a stew, but it gives you that toothiness that some people miss when they're not eating meat. Um, this is the uh, a light kidney bean, or what they call red beans, and I make a beans, a Cuban bean and rice with that. That is just delicious. So we always have beans. I have some beans on my salad every day. We have bean soups and bean stews and beans, bean curries at least every other day. And so there are lots of options. That's some of my beans. There's more of them. Oh, here's the Scarlet Runner beans. Can you, oh, let me see if I can show you. Look at what a beautiful bean this is. I'm waxing poetic about beans. Look at that. They're pink and, and gray, and they're, they're just gorgeous. And when they you soak them and then you cook them, as I said, they're a, a really meaty, wonderful bean. And so I have that. I love lima beans. Look at that. Big bag of beautiful lima beans. You do that cooked in, oh, garlic and oil. Not oil. Garlic and onion with some carrot, and you serve it in a bowl with those vegetables as a savory broth. 
to the lima bean and it's a delicious meal. You see where I'm going with this? I can feed us for months from this cupboard. When COVID began in March of 219, and here we are in May of 220, and people were scrambling for food, I could live out of my cupboard because our main protein source is legumes. We also have protein and a lot of other nourishment, a lot of fiber in our grains, and then all fresh fruits, sorry, mainly vegetables, um, all plant foods have protein, all of them do. And let me see if there was anything else I wanted to show you. So our flowers, oh, I even have more beans than that. Another container, that, and I won't go into it, but I collect these very fun kinds of beans and try them with different um, seasonings. And they all have, as I said, sort of a different mouthfeel that can be just so attractive. Okay, I'm done here because we're running out of time. And yes, we use tea. I use herb teas all the time, and I keep a number of teas. I have two containers of them, a lot of different tea. And again, if they're all airtight, they're going to last quite a long time, and it's just easy to pull out a tea container. What you don't see here are granola bars. I make my own whole food kinds of bars because it's too easy to think, well, it says granola bar, it must be healthy. And if you look at the sugar, look at the sugar, look at the fat, grams of carb, uh, of fats, grams of sugar, four grams of sugar is one teaspoon. If something has four grams of sugar, it's like you taking this teaspoon and going like that with a teaspoon of sugar, six grams, and you're looking at a teaspoon and a half of sugar. That's not okay. What about fat? Something has a hundred calories, seven grams of which are fat. Well, a gram of fat is nine calories. So seven times nine is, what is seven times nine? It's, it's what, 68 calories, whatever that is, 65, can't do math. Um, out of 100, what is that, 70% fat in a food? We don't eat that way in or, uh, if we want to stay healthy. And so a lot of these foods that are supposed to be healthy are really, they're just like eating a candy bar, but with a little bit more fiber in it. Okay, um, so when, we, when it comes to wanting snack foods, we have the tubers in the refrigerator. We have grains that I can scoop up, put a little milk on. Uh, if I'm going to spurge, I'll put extra raisins on it or something, and it's every bit as, as flavorful as having a candy bar. But what about if you want to send somebody off? When we took off, I had with me, and I would grab it out of the freezer where I usually keep it, but it's in my suitcase, which isn't even unpacked yet, my oat cookies, bananas, oats, um, a little bit of nut and a little bit of raisin, and some vanilla extract or vanilla powder and make these cookies that are really just like eating oatmeal. And they, you take them on the go, that and a cup of tea, and you've got a wonderful snack that's whole food as opposed to manufactured in the form of a um, health bar. Okay, and then finally, today I came home with these, and this is the only thing, I had this in my carry-on, so I've had time to put it away. But one of the things we had a lot of in New Mexico was pozzoli. I was able to find a vegetarian restaurant that made the best pozzoli. And what is pozzoli? It's hominy. What is hominy? It's corn. Got to be careful with corn. A lot of them is genetically modified, i.e. sprayed with a lot of things. If they genetically modify it, they do it so they can over the top spray it before they're going to harvest it. And unfortunately, they harvest it with the spray on it. But this is organic white corn pozzoli. And this will be my own pozzoli stews. Um, in here I also have things like, and this is what I told you I would show you earlier, I keep dates in here because I make my date paste. This from Costco at a great price. This, and they're organic. And this from Trader Joe's at a good price. Um, Currants. I love currants, and there's a local store that sells them for a great price, 
And the reason I like currants is that they are raisins, kind of raisins, um, but they are much, much smaller. One raisin, or three currants, is the equivalent of one raisin. And so I can get more flavor through a, let's say, a cookie, and my cookie being oats and bananas and, and some flavorings, and get that much more of it. Um, yes, I do use pasta, if you're wondering that. And here are my pasta containers. And I have in here whole rice, um, uh, what that would that be called, penne. This is elbow macaroni, and that is um, from quinoa. And this is rice spaghetti. And this is lentil spaghetti. This is yellow lentil and brown rice pasta that I got at Trader Joe's. And here's a red lentil pasta that I have. And so there are a lot of times I'll use pasta, but pasta is one of the most processed of the foods I use. It's not that much of a problem, but I would rather have a I would rather have a potato with beans and salsa and broccoli on it than I would to have a plate of pasta. It's a little more of a trigger food to me because it just it feels like when you have pasta you just want to have a giant bowl of it and I don't like having that much of something that's kind of a pasty flour thing and water. But that's just me. If you follow um, Dr. McDougall and his starch-based solution uh, to good health, he has no problem with having pasta every day if you want to. So, but I, I again, prefer to have a lot of the more what I consider nutritionally dense uh, whole foods, like the fruits, vegetables, tubers, and legumes, whole, whole uh, legumes. Okay, so yes, I save bottles because I have a lot of empty bottles here because we're gone, but one of these will have my, um, the uh, tofu sour cream in it, another will have hummus, I just got to get to work on that. Another will have my own homemade vegetable broth because all the scraps of vegetables get cooked, put into broth or put in the freezer for the future. Um, I buy herbs and spices in bulk that are all organic. This is granulated onion, this is organic sage, and I have a number of them that way, a lot more teas down there. And then I keep vinegars, like organic rice vinegar. It's a mild flavor, and if you get a seasoned rice vinegar, the difference is that it's a sweetened vinegar. This is tamari. Uh, which is a gluten-free Japanese soy sauce as opposed to Chinese soy sauce. This should actually be in the refrigerator because once it's opened, it should be refrigerated. Um, apple cider vinegar. And what makes apple cider vinegar special? It's a probiotic. That's why you can see what they call the mother in it, and that is the living probiotic, the living growing organisms that they use to turn the vinegar or the, the apple cider into a vinegar and it's still active. Mustards, I like a Dijon mustard, that's a whole seed. It tends to have less sodium in it per, um, per teaspoon than, for example, a, um, a, let's say a Dijon mustard, a full, fully blended Dijon. Um, always keep organic tahini, an extra bottle of it, because this is what I, and that's just ground up seed. It's ground up sesame seed. So you've got the fat of the sesame seed. It's very filling when you use it in a salad dressing and satisfying, but by the same token, it still has the fiber that you would get in sesame. Um, things like Cholula to add heat to what we're making. Um, oh. Roasted red bell pepper, this goes into our hummus and it's delicious or served on the side of any dish, uh, just strips of it with a little bit of sliced basil on it and that's wonderful. And, and then things like 
these balsamic vinegars. The Grand Reserve from Napa Natural, and that's not Napa Naturals, Napa, 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 Napa Valley Naturals, Cherrywood Age. The difference between this and most organic or most balsamic vinegars, actually they're in my other cupboard, is that this is thicker. It's 4% acidity rather than 6% acidity. So it's thicker, it's been reduced, and a little bit of it drizzled on tomatoes with red onion, a little bit of sliced, um, uh, let's say, olive, uh, black olive. What am I trying to think of? Um, oh, shoot, I've lost my... I've lost my words. What is that called? Kalamata. Kalamata olive, tomato, cucumber, a little bit of this on top, and without having to use olive oil, you have a lovely summer salad. And this is when we're starting to see our tomatoes just ripening. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to show you, my eight-quart um, Instapot. Oh, and then canned things. Within about an hour or two, and I have my milks here, I always keep some nut butter. Some people won't keep nut butter at their house. They feel if they have it, they're going to be spooning up whole tablespoons of it. Um, and that is going to put on weight, and it's more fat than by percentage of calories than they want. But I, I'm aware that I like it so much I can overdo it, and so I just don't do that. Um, but I like this nut zoo because it's cashew, almonds, Brazil nuts, flaxseed, chia seed, hazelnut, pumpkin, with a tiny bit of Celtic salt. And it's, um, I like a tiny bit of this on a red sweet potato or a white sweet potato, a Hannah Yam, as a snack. Yes, even though I make my own spaghetti sauces and this is manufactured, it's nothing but organic tomatoes and onions and uh, black and white pepper. Um, and I keep this on hand because sometimes I don't have the time to make my own. Uh, coconut milk, if I use coconut milk, the canned kind that's thicker to make Thai stir fries, it's going to be reduced fat because they're very fatty. These pineapple, pineapple chunks I keep for my carrot salad that has the currants in it, but today here's some black beans and this will go on a potato one day, uh, saute some onion and garlic, dry saute, put the black beans in, put it over an open-faced hot potato with some salsa and black olive and it's wonderful, but I'll use this can in a little while when I turn off the camera to make our um, hummus. We like to have hummus around all the time. And my tahini, some lemon juice, um, which I have in the freezer from having uh, juiced, gosh, dozens and dozens of my Meyer lemons. And I'll, um, with the roasted red pepper, have a delicious hummus with that. So the canned foods are somewhat bare bones, but they're helpful in a crunch. The organic vegetarian chili from Trader Joe's is good. Season it a little bit, and again, over a potato, over pasta by itself, makes a really fast, easy meal. And when I talk about things like the tofu sour cream, this is what I use. This is silken tofu. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. And it makes 12 ounces of this delicious sour cream, and the recipe is on my website, Nansen and Simpson. Dot com. Tomato products like diced tomatoes and some olives, organic olives. And that's about it. The different milks, soy milk and uh, macadamia milk. I have some low sodium miso, uh, green tea powder, and I think that's it, people. I know that the audience grows after the live, um, and so. You can comment, and I'll answer your comments on either this or my Facebook, my private Facebook. This is Aging Powerfully Facebook, or my um, direct Facebook, doesn't matter. And I'll answer your questions. Oh, and when you have containers, so many things look alike. 
that it's a great idea to have some kind of a printer. And if you don't want to invest in that kind of a printer, I buy this and keep this on hand all the time for my freezer um, because I'm always freezing stews and soups. But when I bought it from Amazon, I wrote in there, easy release um, storage labels. And they are, because I've had them that when you take it out of the freezer and you try to take the label off, it leaves so much white on your container that you're, it just looks awful. And these come off very easily. But you could use a label like that on glass, on plastic, or on any way that you want to store your um, staples. I know I've gone on and on. I hope that this was interesting. I hope that you've answer, I've answered some questions about how we can have staples that can feed us for a long time and give us delicious, multiple flavored combinations of grains and legumes and um, meals that we can whip up rather quickly with some cans as well as some dry goods. Thank you for taking your time to be with me. Um, Check out my website, nansimmonson.com. Share this. Share my message. I hope you will. And my message has everything to do with my passion. I wrote this book because I was six months away from being 70 when I began writing it. It was published three weeks before I turned 70, and that was January of 21. And I knew at 70 that I was in better health, better shape than I'd been in a long time, health-wise because we had been going on over two years of whole food, plant-based, uh, no more binging, no more eating disorder. And I thought, you know, I've got another 20 to 30 or more years ahead of me because that's what the College of Lifestyle Medicine has us all determined to do if we live by four pillars of health. Eat well, mainly plant-based, get plenty of sleep and rest, connect with others, and make sure you're moving every day. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you like crazy. Let's age well together. Bye-bye. <laughs>